Hello everyone, Wisteria here. Thank you for joining in for another episode of Aesop's Fables. And the further we get in the Aesop's Fables, the stranger they are because the older they seem to be. Hmm. The stag and the vine. A stag, pursued by the huntsman, concealed himself under cover of a thick vine. They lost track of him and passed by his hiding place without being aware that he was anywhere near. Supposing all danger to be over, he presently began to browse on the leaves of the vine. The movement drew the attention of the returning huntsman and one of them, supposing some animal to be hidden there, shot an arrow at the venture into the foliage. The unlucky stag was pierced to the heart, and as he expired, he said, I deserve my fate for my treachery in feeding upon the leaves of my protector. And again, the lesson in that is, ingratitude sometimes brings its own punishment. The lamb chased by a wolf. A wolf was chasing a lamb, which took refuge in a temple. The wolf urged it to come out of the precincts and said, If you don't, the priest is sure to catch you and offer you up in sacrifice on the altar. To which the lamb replied, Thanks, I think I'll stay where I am. I'd rather be sacrificed any day than be eaten up by a wolf. The Archer and the Lion an archer went up into the hills to get some sport with his bow, and all the animals fled at the sight of him, with the exception of the lion, who stayed behind and challenged him to fight. But he was shot an arrow at the lion and hid him, and said, There, you see what my messenger can do. Just you wait a moment, and I'll tackle you myself. The lion, however, when he felt the sting of the arrow, ran away as fast as his legs could carry him. A fox, who had seen it all happen, said to the lion, Come, don't be a coward. Why don't you stay and show fight? But the lion replied, You won't get me to stay. You just won't. And you won't get me to show any fight. When he sends a messenger like that before him, he must himself be a terrible fellow to deal with. The lesson in that is, give a wide berth to those who can do damage at a distance. Very true indeed. A wolf and the goat. A wolf caught sight of a goat browsing above him on the scanty herbage that grew on top of a steep rock. And being unable to actually get at her, the goat... He did try his best to induce her to come down lower. You're risking your life up there, madam. Indeed you are, he called out. Pray, take my advice and come down here, where you will find plenty of better food. The goat turned a knowing eye upon him. It's little you care whether I get good grass or bad, said she. What you want is to eat me. True. The sick stag. A stag fell sick and lay in a clearing in the forest, too weak to move from the spot. When the news of his illness spread, a number of the other beasts came to inquire after his health, and they one and all nibbled a little of the grass that grew round the invalid, till at last there was not a blade within his reach. In a few days, He began to mend, but was still too feeble to get up and go in search of fodder. And thus, he perished miserably of hunger, owing to the thoughtfulness of his friends. The Ass and the Mule A certain man who had an ass and a mule loaded them both up one day and set out about a journey. So long as the road was fairly level, the ass got on very well, But by and by they came to a place 
among the hills where the road was very rough and steep, and the ass was at last grasp. So he begged the mule to relieve him of a part of his load, but the mule refused. At last, from sheer weariness, the ass stumbled and fell down a steep place and was killed. The driver was in despair, but he did the best he could. He added the ass's load to the mule, and he also flayed the ass and put his skin on top of the double load. The mule could only just manage the extra weight, and as he staggered painfully along, he said to himself, I've only got what I deserved. If I'd been willing to help the ass at first, I should not now be carrying his load and his skin into the whole bargain. Brother and Sister A certain man had two children, a boy and a girl, and the boy was a good-looking, as the girl was plain. One day, as they were playing together in their mother's chamber, they chanced upon a mirror and saw their own features for the first time. The boy saw what a handsome fellow he was and began to boast to his sister about his good looks. She, on her part, was ready to cry with vexation when she was aware of her plainness and took his remarks as an insult to herself. Running to her father, she told him of her brother's conceit and accused him of meddling with his mother's things. He laughed and kissed them both and said, My children, learn from now onwards to make good use of the glass. You, my boy, strive to be as good as it shows you to be. Handsome, and you, my girl, resolve to make up for the plainness of your features by the sweetness of your disposition. The Heifer and the Ox a heifer went up to an ox, who was straining hard at the plough, and sympathised with him in a rather patronising sort of way on the necessary, necessity, necessity sorry, of his having to work so hard. Not long afterwards, there was a festival in the village, and everyone kept holidays, but whereas... The ox was turned loose into the pasture. The effer was seized and led off to sacrifice. Ah, said the ox with a grin and a smile. I see now why you were allowed to have such an idle time. It was because you were always intended for the altar. Whereas me, I am worth much more. Mm. The Kingdom of the Lion When the lion resigned over the beasts of the earth and he was never cruel or even tyrannical but as gentle and just as a king ought to be. During his reign he called a general assembly of the beasts and drew up a code of laws under which all were to live in perfect equality and harmony. The wolf and the lamb, the tiger and the stag, the leopard and the kid, the dog and the hare, all should dwell side by side in unbroken peace and friendship. The hare said, Oh, how I have longed for this day when the weak take their place without fear by the side of the strong. I imagine that. If that was a actual real thing that happened, it would be very, very bizarre indeed, I think. I do. If you can hear snoring, that's Dougal snoring at the side of me. I mean, I apologise for that. But, you know, he does snore a lot. The ass and his driver... An ass was being driven down a mountain road, and after jogging along for a while sensibly enough, he suddenly quitted the track and rushed to the edge of the precipice. He was just about to leap over the edge when his driver caught hold of his tail and did his best to pull him back. But pull as he might, he couldn't get the ass to budge from the brink. 
the last he gave up crying, All right then, get to the bottom your own way, but it's the way to sudden death, and you'll find out quick enough. Poor ass, going to jump off it. That's not good, is it? Dear me. The Lion and the Hare A lion found a hare sleeping in her form and was just going to devour her when he caught sight of a passing stag. Dropping the hare, he at once made for the bigger game, but finding after a long chase that he could not overtake the stag, he abandoned the attempt and came back to the hare. When he reached the spot, however, he did, of course, find... What do you think he found? Mrs. Hare was nowhere to be seen, and he had to go without his dinner. It serves me right, he said. I should have been content with what I had got, instead of hankering after a better prize. <laughs> so true. And that's the end of this selection of fables. Thank you for joining me, and thank you for listening. Whether you're on one of my podcasts or on YouTube, you can find me, Wisteria Energy Twister, on most podcast platforms and on YouTube. Many blessings.